Good evening. We will now begin the webinar. Today is Tuesday, November 9th, 2021, and the time is 6.03 p.m. This webinar is being livecast and recorded and will be available publicly on the MTA YouTube channel and the Bronx Bus Network Redesign Project website at new.mta.info forward slash Bronx Bus Redesign. By attending this virtual web webinar, you are consenting to being recorded. Today's webinar will begin with opening remarks, followed by a presentation on the Bronx Bus Network Redesign and then public comments. Only those who signed up to speak in advance will be able to give public comments. If you have joined the Zoom under a name that is different from the one you used when you signed up to speak, please identify yourself in the Q&A function with the name you used when you signed up. If you did not sign up to speak today at today's webinar, you can submit written comments online through the project website. Anyone who joined the Zoom may also use the Q&A function throughout today's webinar to ask questions or to provide comments. Cart captioning, American Sign Language, and Spanish interpreters are available at today's webinar. For simultaneous interpretation in Spanish, please click on the interpretation icon in your Zoom meeting controls and select the Spanish language channel. We'll now start with opening remarks from Craig Cipriano, Interim President, MTA New York City Transit. Thank you, Kate, and good evening. I am Craig Cipriano, Interim, Interim President at New York City Transit, and we are thrilled to be here today to talk about the Bronx Network Redesign Local Plan Restart with you and share a few key updates made to the plan since it was first published in October of 2019. This virtual public meeting is the final result of years of public engagement and work with communities across the Bronx and Upper Manhattan, focused on bringing our customers faster, more reliable bus service. Over the past two months, the Bronx Bus Network Redesign Team has presented our plans to a joint meeting of the Borough Service Cabinet and Bronx Borough Board. Borough President Ruben Diaz Jr., elected officials, transportation advocates, and interested community boards across the Bronx and Northern Manhattan. I'd like to thank all the participants. This redesign would not have been possible without your engagement, encouragement, and input. The Bronx Bus Network redesign aims to simplify the local bus network while enhancing connectivity and building an all-day frequent network of transit for our customers. By improving bus stop spacing and working with our partners at New York City DOT to expand bus priority on our city streets, we are utilizing everything in our toolbox to speed up travel and get our customers where they need to go in a fast, efficient, and safe manner as possible. There have been very few changes to the redesign since the release of the proposed final plan in the fall of 2019. And in case you don't think we are listening, we definitely are. After receiving Then turn the meeting over to you, our customers, to hear public comments on the proposal. If you have a specific question, you can enter them into the Q&A chat function, and our team of experts will do their best to respond to your question before the end of this meeting. Thank you again to all our partners across the city, colleagues at New York City Transit, and the public for your invaluable feedback and engagement. At this time, I would like to introduce my fellow, my fellow panelists, starting with Frank Anacaro. Thank you, Craig. Good evening, and thank you to all the attendees. My name is Frank Anacaro, Acting President of MTA Bus Company, Senior Vice President of New York City Transit Department of Buses. I'm Dorian Statham, the Director for Bus Network Redesign. Good evening, everyone. I'm Jessica Signorella, the Project Manager for the Bronx Bus Network Redesign. And I'm Kate Contino, Assistant Director, Government and Community Relations, and I will be your moderator this evening. 
We also have several individuals from our respective staffs here with us to listen to what you have to say. Your comments will be considered and included in the final project summary we plan to present to the MTA Board of Directors next month. With that, let's jump in as there is a lot to cover tonight. Thank you. So why are we redesigning the bus network? The Bronx bus network has not changed substantially in decades, with some routes still following old trolley lines. New York, as New York City and the Bronx grows and changes, we must change too. The redesign is an opportunity to look comprehensively at Bronx local bus network. Bronx bus speeds are some of the slowest in the US and less than seven miles per hour during peak travel times. Ridership has been declining in New York City and in the Bronx over the last decade. Congestion has also worsened, um, affecting our bus beats and service reliability. The Bronx redesign is an opportunity to improve bus service and improve the customer experience. So I just want to walk you through the kind of the, re the redesign process. The Bronx redesign launched in fall of 2018. At that, in 2019, we issued an existing conditions report, a draft plan, and a proposed final plan. In February 2020, we held a public meeting, a public hearing on the Bronx local bus proposed final plan. And shortly after that, the project was paused because of the COVID pandemic. Recently, we released our addendum to the proposed final plan, and we are here today to get feedback on this plan. Uh, the proposal will go to the MTA board in de December for approval, and if approved, the Bronx local bus redesign would be implemented in summer of 2022. So public engagement and input is an integral part of the redesign process. We have asked for feedback during every step of the process and we will continue throughout the project. One part of our outreach strategy in the Bronx was to meet customers where they are. We held nine open houses and six workshops in the Bronx to speak directly to our bus riders. We also did 13 on street and in station events in the Bronx and upper Manhattan where we distributed over 16,000 pamphlets. Throughout the process, we have utilized digital tools to, to get additional feedback and comments. Uh, we conducted in-person and online surveys, and we utilized digital information screens on our buses and subways. We received more than 1,000 comments, and many were used to inform our current proposal, including requests for more direct service, fewer bus stops, and faster service, and improved crosstown connections. With that, I would like to turn the presentation over to Jessica Signorelli, the project manager, to talk us through the redesign strategy and how we were how we applied them to the Bronx, and also to discuss the detailed route proposals. Thank you, Dorian. I'd like to walk you through some general redesign strategies that we have instituted throughout the uh, entirety of this project. The first being simplifying the network. We heard from our customers that straight more direct routes were something they wanted, so we aimed to do just that in streamlining several routes. In addition, we wanted to enhance connectivity, particularly east-west bus connections, as well as strengthening intraborough travel between the Bronx and Manhattan. In addition, we aimed to improve frequency. We wanted to prioritize an all-day frequent network and increase frequency on nine key corridors for 11 routes in the network. We also aimed to expand bus priority. This is particularly uh, important with our partners at NYC DOT, where we've aimed to uh, expand busways, bus lanes, and other bus priority treatments, such as queue jumps, uh, boarding islands, and other elements that help to speed up service and improve reliability for our customers. In addition, we're focused on balancing bus stops. The idea here is to improve bus stop spacing to get customers where they're going faster and bring the Bronx bus stop spacing average up to something similar to our peer systems. Today it's about 800 feet, and with the bus stop balancing we're proposing, it brings the average stop spacing to about 1,100 feet. Here's one strategy we're gonna go into a bit more detail on, that's simplifying the network. As you see, there's 14 route changes that we have proposed in addition to two new routes. We propose to change the alignment of the BX4A, the BX6SBS, the BX11, the BX15, the BX18, the BX24, introduction of the new BX25, BX29, BX30, BX35, BX36, BX40, BX42, the Q50 Limited, which comes out of a Bronx Depot, the M100, also from a Bronx Depot, and the M125, which is, uh, we'll give you some more detail, but that's essentially the southern half of the BX15. 
Again, we touched on enhancing the connectivity in the borough. Um, one of the elements under that would be extending the BX6 SBS to Soundview, the BX11 to Parkchester, the BX18 in Highbridge, as well as the BX35 to West Farms. New connections would include the BX25 serving Northern Co-op City to Bedford Park, the BX30 traveling in, along Boston Road, and the BX40 and 42 routes serving the East 180th Street 25 ADA accessible subway station. In improving re frequency, we mentioned there's 11 routes and nine key corridors. Frequency will be improved on the BX4, the BX4A, the BX6 local, the BX11, BX13, BX18, BX23, the BX28, the BX29, BX38, and BX41 SBS. We touched on expanding bus priority, and again, we're working with our partners at New York City Department of Transportation. They analyzed 46 different corridors, and through that analysis, they identified 10 corridors for priority treatments. We've already completed several, including 149, EL Grant Highway, the first half of University Avenue, as well as 181st Street. Uh, presently in implementation includes the Pelham Bay Park Station Area, the southern half of University Avenue, as well as Story Avenue. Forthcoming corridors include Tremont Avenue, Gun Hill Road, Washington Bridge, and Fordham Road. We want to talk about balancing bus stops just for a moment. We've proposed roughly 400 local and limited bus stops to be removed in the Bronx and Upper Manhattan. We want to flag that this is roughly 18% of proposed stops. It improves spacing to 1,100 feet, as we mentioned earlier. One thing we really want to go over is what are the elements uh, that bring benefit in bus stops balancing. First, New York City has some of the shortest distance between bus stops of any major city, with an average of 805 feet between stops. Other major, major American cities have stop spacing of roughly 1,000 feet on average, and we do save a minimum of 20 seconds per stop removed. Maintaining, we did aim to maintain stops that have heavy ridership, those that are, provide key connections from bus to bus or bus to subway, and stops that serve key community facilities, whether a senior center, an educational institution, a medical facility, and other types. In addition, some of the bus stop balancing that we proposed has already um, been implemented to accommodate some bus priority projects that we just touched on earlier. We do want to talk about the effects that COVID had on our bus ridership. We found that the Bronx exper experienced a small drop in ridership compared to other parts of the city. And our analysis showed that as our ridership began to return, pre-COVID ridership patterns did as well. And our routing changes that are proposed in the Bronx redesign uh, final plan continue to improve service for our customers. We still aim to build an all-day frequent network that will directly benefit our essential, essential workers, both today and in the future and we will continue to monitor ridership and adjust service levels as are needed. These are the three key updates to the proposed final plan. Some of Craig previously touched on, but the one that we really wanna highlight first is the BX6 SBS. You may have noticed in the presentation there were a couple asterisks after this route. We are proposing to bring this route to uh, Soundview via Story Avenue. However, any uh, implementation of this is postponed until 2023 when the Metro card is completely retired and Omni is fully deployed. So the postponement of changes include any frequency changes to the BX5 local bus service as well as the BX6 local service. So just to reiterate, the BX6 SVS, the BX5 local, and the BX6 local proposed changes that are highlighted in the plan will not occur until 2023 following retirement of the MetroCard and Omni deployment. Moving on to the BX28, in fall of 2019, we did propose having this route go in a more direct way. However, we heard from community members, particularly folks at Tracy Towers, as well as elected officials that, that there was concern around this route alignment. Following um, the concerns we heard, the operations planning uh, department as well as the Department of Buses had folks go out and conduct field visits to inv investigate further, and we made a decision that the BX28 route alignment would remain as it is today. The BX28 will still receive frequency improvements, but the route alignment will not change. Also, the BX34. We heard from folks at Servium Gardens, as well as other elected officials, that the alignment changes we were proposing would inconvenience too many customers. We also sent folks out to do additional field visits and had the same kind of discussion and decision to maintain the existing route alignment of the BX34. 
Again, the BX34 route alignment will not change and will re remain as it is today. Now we're going to go through some highlights of the proposed final plan. For any specific details that are not covered in these highlights, we encourage you to visit our website to learn more. The BX4 and BX4A. The BX4 will maintain its current route alignment and continue to serve the hub, while the BX4A is being proposed to terminate at Glad Gladstone Square. Uh, the BX4 and 4A will have a combined weekday frequency of eight minutes or better all day, and we're also increasing the combined frequency for Saturday and Sunday service to 10 minutes or better all day. Again, we touched on the BX6 SBS a moment ago. We're just going to walk through the proposed route alignment change as well as any other relevant changes accommodating or accompanying it. <clears throat> Today, the BX6 SBS travels along 161st Street and then eventually reaches Hunts Point. We're proposing that the six local would continue to serve Hunts Point, while the six SBS would instead travel via Bruckner, Bronx River Ave to Story Ave, terminating at uh, Pugsley and Turnbull near the mall in Soundview. Uh, the new service would provide a new east-west connection and a more one direct connection for customers that are traveling from Soundview to other areas in Central Bronx. And again, there will be um, a frequency of eight minutes or better all day with this route. Here we're showing you the BX11 and the BX18. The BX11 is proposed for realignment to give more direct crosstown service between the George Washington Bridge bus terminal and Hugh J. Grant Circle. The BX18 we're proposing to expand its catchment area to provide new service to 168th Street and Shakespeare Avenue. This is replacing a discontinued segment of the BX11. These proposals will provide better BX18 access to the East 170th Street 4 B and D subway stations, and overall will provide a more frequent direct service for our customers. We have no proposed route alignment changes for the BX23. However, we are proposing to increase its re uh, weekday frequency to 20 minutes or better all day. This is uh, a benefit for folks taking the BX23, and it was also to make up for the loss of BX29 and Q50 limited service during the midday and weekends in Co-op City. To clarify, the BX29 is proposed to terminate at Pelham Bay Park 6 station, while the Q50 limited would only terminate at the Pelham Bay Park 6 station during, peak, or during uh, midday and weekends. The BX24 is a route that serves Country Club and operates to the Hutchinson Metro Center. We're proposing to discontinue short, a short meandering segment within Country Club along Ohm Avenue, Griswold Drive, and Spencer Drive. These small discontinuations and straightening of this route will provide faster bus speeds and more reliable service due to the reduction in turns. The BX25 is a new route. We heard from folks in Co-op City and they wanted something that operated between Northern Co-op City along Allerton Avenue to Bedford Park. This new route um, will follow the same routing alignment as the BX26 along Allerton Avenue. And the two routes will have the same combined frequency as the six BX26 does today uh, along Allerton Avenue while their frequency will be split when in Co-op City. This new direct connection from Co-op City to Bedford Park area is something that we heard from customers they wanted and were providing it. Again, just to touch on the BX29, this route will be shortened with a new terminal at Pelham Bay Park 6 subway station. In addition, the BX29 will receive overnight service, giving it 24-7 service span. Um, this is an improvement for our customers on the BX29. We heard from folks in City Island. We know they wanted overnight service, and we also found that the majority of customers taking the BX29 today are transferring at the Pelham Bay Park 6 station to the subway or another bus. The BX30 is a route we're also proposing an alignment change to. Today, the BX30 operates via Boston Road to East Gun Hill Road, um, where it du duplicates the BX28 and 38. We're proposing that it will no longer operate along East Gun Hill Road and will instead continue along Boston Road to Pelham Parkway. Today, in the green route alignment area you see, there is no New York City Transit local bus service. So we're providing new service along this corridor and giving a new connection to the Pelham Parkway 25 subway station, as well as BX12 local and select bus service. Here we're going to discuss the BX11 and BX35 together for a moment. 
As we mentioned earlier, the BX35 is proposed to have a route realignment so that it will bypass congestion at Gladstone Square and instead better serve West Farms Road, Jennings Street, and Bryant Avenue. We're also uh, proposing to increase the weekday frequency of the BX11 to eight minutes or better all day. We're improving service spans across all day types to operate new overnight service and provide 24-7 service on the BX11. The BX36 route will still travel between Soundview and Washington Heights, but it will instead operate on East Tremont Avenue rather than East 174th Street and East 180th Street. This route will continue to serve West Arms and East Tremont neighborhoods. However, it will be avoiding a bit of an indirect circuitous routing along Boston Road. The modified BX11 and BX40 routings will provide new crosstown service to riders on East 174th Street and East 180th Street that was previously provided by the BX36. Here we're going to discuss the BX40 and BX42. These routes will still travel between Throgs Neck and Morris Heights, but will instead do so via East Tremont Avenue and East 180th Street. The rerouted BX36 will replace existing BX40 and BX42 routings on Rosedale Avenue and Webster Avenue. This redesign routing provides more direct service along East Tremont Avenue and East 180th Street and also avoids the congestion at West Farm Square. In addition, a new connection is provided to the ADA accessible East 180th Street 25 subway station. Here we're going to talk about routes that operate within the Bronx and Northern Manhattan. The BX15 today operates along 3rd Avenue and then travels into Manhattan via 125 Street. We're proposing that the BX15 be split into two routes to improve reliability and bus threads throughout the length of the route. The new BX15 would operate between the Hub and Fordham Plaza, while we would introduce the M125 to replace southern service of the BX15 along 125th Street to the Hub. In addition, the M100 would be shortened to no longer operate along 125th Street to reduce bus-on-bus -bus congestion and improve reliability on the rest of the route. Frequencies will be adjusted slightly to reflect ridership trends and we will continue to monitor and adjust service as needed. The Q50 Limited. Today this route operates between Flushing, Queens, serving Pelham uh, Bay Park 6 Station and then serving Co-op City. Under our proposal, the Q50 Limited will operate between Flushing, Queens, and Co-op City during the peak hours only. During off-peak hours, this route would terminate at the Pelham Bay Park 6 station. Here are various proposed schedule changes. We're not going to walk you through, through all of these, but I'll just touch on a few. You can see that we, what I mentioned earlier regarding the BX4 and BX4A is shown as well as those schedule adjustments we mentioned for the BX5, BX6 local, and BX6 SBS that are postponed until 2023. Here you can see frequency improvements for the BX13, as well as frequency improvements for the BX18 and BX23. And here, frequency improvements for the BX2838, as well as BX29 and frequency improvement to the BX41 SBS, as well as the frequency proposed for the new M125. Now I'm going to go through a brief timeline. We just wanted to let folks know that you may have heard or seen us in September of this year. We, as Craig said, we presented to the Bronx Borough Board, uh, the borough president and elected officials. We publicly announced uh, the addendum to the local bus final plan. And in October and November, now we've been presenting to community boards to highlight any changes to the plan and here we are at our virtual public meeting. As Dorian mentioned, we're going to the MTA board in December to get a vote on this plan and if voted in approval, the plan is proposed for implementation in summer of 2022. Now we just want to walk you through a brief web tutorial. It's a short video that shows you where you can find all of the information about the Bronx Bus Network redesign that we've shared here with you today, as well as additional details on each route. We hope, we check out your, we hope you check out your route or routes if you take more than one, and that you learn how the redesign is going to benefit your commute. I'm gonna turn it over uh, for the video now. Thank you. We're going to walk you through how to access the Bronx Bus Network redesign main site 
and find relevant information about any of the routes that you might take in the system. First, you want to enter in your search bar new.mta.info forward slash Bronx bus redesign. Entering that will send you here to this page. If you see, we have information about the, today's meeting, all the relevant details. This has been present on the website. And if you continue to scroll down, you'll see, see how you can learn about the proposed network. You can read the proposed final plan. You can click here to review your route. You can check out our frequently asked questions or submit a comment. When clicking on review your route, this is where you will find the most useful information in terms of any potential changes to bus routes you might take. We're going to click on the BX4A to give you an example of what you'll find. Here you can see a summary of proposed changes to the 4A, stop balancing, schedule information, including span of service and frequency of service, as well as a route profile. Clicking on the route profile will provide you with a downloadable copy of all the relevant information to your route, including a map showing the alignment change, as well as a list of all the stops that are proposed for balancing. Should you have another route you'd like to see, simply click back and you'll be led to the Review Your Route page once again, where all route profiles are shown. If you're already familiar with your route and you simply want to check out our frequently asked questions, you can click here. This will provide you with all the basics that we have. And if you find there's a question that you didn't get an answer to by reviewing this, you can sim simply click back and click Submit Your Comment. One thing we already also want to walk you through is if you have a challenge remembering this website or you want to access the site by just going to the main MTA site, you can simply go enter new.mta.info and clicking that, you'll be sent to the main page. You'll see a lot of information and we encourage you to scroll down. You'll scroll to where you see featured projects. When you reach featured projects, you want to click see all. Clicking that will open you to all the ongoing projects that the MTA has at the moment, including bus network redesign. Now this tab will send you to the main page for network redesign. This is collective of all the redesigns and the status of where they're at. So this includes the Bronx, Queens, and Brooklyn. Here we're going to click on the Bronx to get to the main page. This is how we got to this page via going by the main MTA site and it brings you to the same place with all the same information we walked you through before. Again, if you have any questions or concerns, we wanna hear from you and we wanna know if you've reviewed your route and what you thought, so please submit your comment. Thank you. Thank you. That was a lot of really great information and as Jessica just demonstrated, everything we're discussing here today is online at new.mta.info forward slash Bronx bus redesign, which is also on your screen. So please check it out. We'll now move into the public portion, but we'll now move into the public comment portion of today's webinar. We have several members of the public registered to speak today. We're gathering, in, we're gathering public comments today to hear from you, our customers and stakeholders. The comments heard here tonight will be added to those we received at the public hearing held in February, 2020. When we, presented this, when we present this project to the MTA Board of Directors next month. Rather than responding to comments as they are given, we will do our best to address specific questions whenever possible in the Q&A chat function. Anyone who joined the Zoom may also use the Q&A function throughout today's webinar to ask questions or provide comments. Please note that each speaker is limited to two minutes. We ask that speakers keep their remarks to the two minute time frame out of respect to all the other speakers. As a reminder, we ask that our public speakers adhere to the MTA's rules of conduct and decorum. Due, due to the number of speakers, it is possible that we will go over our scheduled time, but everyone who signed up will be called to speak today. If you do not want to wait to be called, you can send us your comment directly if you have joined the Zoom under a name that is different than the one you used when you signed up to speak, please identify yourself in the Q&A chat function with the name you used when you signed up. When you're called to speak, there will be a brief transition on your screen. Please make sure that once your screen updates that your camera and microphone are enabled. 
before beginning your remarks. You will not be able to unmute or enable your camera until it is your turn to speak. Please remain patient until then. In the event you miss your name being called, we will call the list one more time after all speakers in attendance have been called a first time. As a reminder, this webinar is being live cast and recorded and will be available publicly on our YouTube channel and our project website at new.mta.info forward slash Bronx bus redesign. Uh, by attending this webinar, you are consenting to being recorded. Please be aware that there will be a warning beep to remind you when you have 30 seconds left to conclude your remarks. Thank you for your patience and understanding throughout this virtual public comment session. Our first speaker will be Farah Rubin on behalf of Council Member Mark Joni. Thank you very much. I hope you can hear me. Yes. Uh, my name is Farah Rubin. I'm here to speak on behalf of Councilman Joni. Uh, I'm calling in support in the, of the community of City Island against some proposed changes to the uh, BX29 route. Uh, we thank you for, for reinstating 24-7 service here, but there are concerns. Um, as of last week on the plan, it mentioned you are removing three stops in the area. And I'm here to speak on behalf of putting those stops back in place. Um, there are a few more stops you are removing on this, but those three stops are very important. There are many seniors on this island and it is an island. They don't have many other transportation options. And especially for people who find it very hard to walk, they rely on those stops to um, go to the shops and have services in this area. So we are, you know, we are putting our request in to please make, keep those stops in. Um, the stops are the Cross Cross Street, the Sheffield Street, and Pell Place. Um, we really thank you for considering that and listening to the needs and concerns of this community and Councilman Joni. Um, we just feel a bus can easily pass the stop if there's no one waiting for it. And um, hopefully it would not, it would not affect the, the speed of service too much. So please consider that. Thank you. Thank you. The next speaker will be Raymond Martinez, followed by Marguerite Allard. Raymond Martinez. Hello, um, my name is Raymond Martinez, and I am from the Co-op City neighborhood here in the Bronx. Um, I've read over the BX23 plan, and I, I do commend you guys for bumping up the service to every 20 or better, but the span of service is a bit of, of a concern to a lot of people in my community, where currently the Q50 runs in the neighborhood, and it starts at 3.30 in the morning on weekdays. And the BX29, which is also being removed, is it starts at 4.30 in the morning, Monday to Saturday, whereas the BX23 will not start until 4.45 a.m. on weekdays and 6.15 a.m. on Saturday, well, 6 o'clock a.m. on Saturdays. So, like, there's going to be, like, a good hour plus uh, cut in service for between Co-op City and Pelham Bay, at least for most of our neighborhood. So I just hope you guys consider starting the BX23 at 3.30 a.m. as well as having the 23 start around 4.30 a.m. on Saturdays as well, just to keep service consistent with what it is now. Uh, that's about it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Our next speaker will be Marguerite Allard, followed by Karina Hammer. Marguerite Allard.
I, sorry, technical issues, sorry. Just short but sweet, the BX8 um, removal of stop on Williamsbridge Road in St. Raymond's. This is a necessary stop as many stores uh, frequented often are in this area. And that is all I like to say. Thank you very much. Thank you. Our next speaker will be Karina Hammer, followed by John Doyle. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, you may begin your remarks. Hi, my name is Karina Hammer. I'm part of the Fordham Hill Oval community and would like to make several points about how we need full service for the BXM3 bus line from East 29th Street and Madison Avenue to Getty Square Yonkers. Number one, crime is at an all-time high. You cannot deny this. I refuse to take subways due to the high crime we are facing. People are getting attacked and mugged and I feel so much safer when I use the express bus. If I have to take the subways all the way uptown, by the time it gets there, there's practically nobody on the train and I am petrified about this. People, including myself, have appointments and places to attend in the city early, in the early morning and midday, and we need this express bus. Uber is way too expensive to take, and local city buses will take forever to take us and others home, everybody home, I should say. Uh, number two, the same goes for weekend service. Do not remove the weekend service. Everyone, especially seniors, need the service to get into the city. With, this con with the continued assaults happening in the subways and crowded subways on the weekends and COVID still rampant within the city, City, including breakthrough cases. We need these buses for our safety. Number three, if price congestion goes into effect, nobody will be able to bring their cars into the city, yet we still do not want to ride the subways and crowded local buses. The only way to get into the city and back uptown to the Bronx safely and at a mod modest price is by using the BXM3 express bus and uh, including other express buses throughout the Bronx during mornings and weekends. And number four, instead of wasting money on those useless, good for nothing MTA so old cops along the select bus service lines, use that money to fund our express buses. Mind you, I am not referring to NYPD transit cops. These MTA cops are never there when help is needed. All they do is harass people and hold up passengers and buses from getting to their destination. Please stop messing with our service and let us keep what we need and deserve. Thank you. Thank you. The next speaker will be John Doyle, followed by Joseph Morales. Hello, can you see me? Yes. Great. All right, well, thank you all uh, for allowing me to testify today. And I actually just wanna start from a position of gratitude and say thank you uh, for the 24 seven service on the Bronx 29 bus. This has been sorely, sorely needed for some time. And I'm glad that uh, I'm glad the MTA has finally recognized that. We're a working class community. Many people work non-traditional hours. Many people are essential workers who are not on a nine to five schedule or even a nine to 12 PM schedule. Um, we're a destination location and many restaurant workers are left to bike home through a dimly lit Pelham Bay Park. And this will really make a world of difference to them. And I'm reminded by the, um, the passing of the tragic passing of Gabriela Aguilar, who was a worker in one of these restaurants. She was killed by a vehicular accident in September, 2015, because you couldn't rely on this bus to work 24 seven. So I'm glad that it's happening now. Um, and I'm also very grateful uh, that the bus is being taken off of I-95, which unfortunately is why it's going to be a loop and not going to Co-op City. People can transfer to the 23 bus from there. Uh, I think that's needed. Uh, there are seven stops on I-95, and unfortunately, the cutoff in those stops leaves it so that there's a lot of bunching on the highway traffic, and that's why the bus has been so unreliable for so long. Uh, with all that in mind, after saying how much I appreciate it, I do hope you keep the stop on Cross Street. Of course, it is an essential stop. A lot of people do get off there. It's right near the American Legion Post and a few restaurants. I think that would be good to keep that. And I would ask that you reconsider the, uh, the stop at Pelham Bay Station as it's being moved and it might be better to leave it where it is for safety issues. It's not a very well utilized area in the park and there have been safety concerns in the past few months. Thank you very much. Thank you. The next speaker will be Joseph Morales followed by Kathleen Sebek, Joseph Morales.
Can everybody hear me? Yes, you may begin. Um. Okay, sorry, trying to get the camera on. Okay, um, good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Joseph Morales. Um, I am a um a blogger. My blog is called, called Trans Essential. I cover transportation issues in the New York City area. In addition, I am a sophomore at Bronx Engineering and Technology Academy in the Bronx, and I take the Bronx across bus across the Bronx from my home in Pelham Gardens to Kingsbridge on a daily basis. Um, my primary concerns uh, with the bus redesign plan, number one, is the timeline on certain key pieces of bus infrastructure, such as bus-only traffic signals, bus lanes, particularly on Gun Hill Road, and time timelines for bus lanes on Gun Hill Road and Story Avenue in the Bronx. Bec um, also, other pieces of infrastructure, such as bus borders and protected bus lanes. Um, there has not really been much of a timeline given to these types of projects. And we know how um, the MTA and a lot of city agencies operate, especially when it comes to projects that are particularly benefit people of color, that these ideas frequently get kicked down the road only for the main blame to be passed around through different gubernatorial administrations. So I really hope that concrete timelines are placed on things like that. In addition, I am upset with the cuts to express bus service. Um, I think that the cuts to routes such as the BXM2, um, not cuts, sorry, limited hours on routes such as the BXM2 and the BXM5 do not account for all passengers needs to travel to and from Manhattan at hours beyond the morning and afternoon peaks. Um, thank you for your time. Thank you. The next speaker will be Kathleen Sebek, followed by Tyler Wright. Oh, good evening. Um, I'm, call I'm calling in regarding the BX29, which services City Island. Um, it's not necessary to remove the bus stops on Sutherland Street, Cross Street, Schofield Street, Pell Place, or any of the proposed removal of stops to increase the frequency of the bus line. Mid many agent New Yorkers live on City Island who are limited in mobility, prefer shorter distances to their bus stops in order to decrease the need for walking. Frequency improvement can still be achieved by allowing bus drivers to bypass bus stops if there are no passengers waiting at a stop or if no passenger is getting on or off at a stop, which is currently common practice. Um, I saw in your presentation at the beginning regarding BX29, you didn't mention the removal of the bus stop, so I don't know if it's still in there. Um, I'm also a member of the City Island Civic Association and many of our members and our civic have written to the MTA, as well as to our Councilman Jonai's office. Senator Biagi uh, testified the last meeting to not remove the bus stops on our behalf. And I think our community board will also be on. So please leave our bus stops. It really will not save much time on the bus route as our island is only a mile and a half long. And I appreciate the time. Thank you very much. Thank you. The next speaker will be Tyler Wright, followed by Patricia Nunes. Yes, hello? Yes, we can hear you. You can begin your comment. Yes, uh, my concern is the BX-15 bus. Um, as you know, the BX-15 bus runs from Fordham all the way to Harlem 125th Street. My issue is that the, the new M25 bus is going to have the same issues as the BX-15 bus. The traffic along 125th Street is going to and from the Bronx. Uh, the other concern that I have is for the elderly people who needs, who needs to get to uh, 125th Street, uh, especially if it's cold outside. If there's delays in, in Harlem, 125th Street, that's, that's, and especially in the cold weather, a lot of elderly people are gonna be waiting a long time and a lot of do not wanna take the subway. The other issue I have is the express bus, the BXM11, that's the bus that I take. Please do not cut that service on the weekend, especially around the Bronx Zoo, that bus gets very crowded uh, because of tourists. It's just everything is being reopened back up. 
Also, I don't know if you guys are still proposed of bringing it on Bronx Wood, which is very dangerous because the BX8 bus does not run there all the time. And it's also very dark in that area. A lot of people like White Plains Road, especially at Gunhead Road, because you can transfer to the BX28 and the 38, the 38 and also the 30 bus. So please do not eliminate that bus on White Plains Road. Keep it the way it is and also keep the house on the BX711 bus. Thank you. Thank you. The next speaker will be Patricia Nunez, followed by Angelinas Alba Lam. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, you may begin. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, I'm in Riverdale. And the, my concerns are with the two express buses, BXM1 and 2. Um, the BXM1, excuse me, strike that. The BXM2 is having its uh, route change to go down the west side um, instead of going down Fifth Avenue, which is very important for people in the neighborhood, in the community. There are elderly disabled people who rely on the BXM2 to take them to Mount Sinai on Fifth Avenue and 98th Street. So that would be a real, um, real hardship for a lot of people by changing that route of the BXM2. Um, in addition, uh, the other main concern that I have is with the cutoff of the service to downtown, to Manhattan uh, on weekdays and um, weekends uh, to cut off um, at three o'clock in the afternoon. I think there was one at four, I forget all of them exactly, but they've cut off a service to Manhattan in the late afternoons, early evenings. Um, to late afternoon, early evenings, makes it very difficult for people then to get into Manhattan um, to go see family, friends, the theater is opening up again, our New York nightlife is opening up again. It's very difficult for people to get around without those buses. And I, really, and I agree with what another panelist had said earlier. I don't take the subway. My family doesn't take the subway. It's been a horrible year on the subway with violent crime increases mentally ill people pushing people onto the subway tracks. We cannot take the subway. We really need the BXM1 and BXM2 uh, routes and uh, continued time into nighttime service to Manhattan. Thank you very much. Thank you. The next speaker will be Angelina's Albalam, followed by Gladys Jackson. Hi, good evening. I also want to express gratitude for all the work that has gone into this bus redesign. Um, I live in Woodlawn um, and we are far from any subways. And so we rely on buses to get to subways and other um, the Metro North as well. I just wanted to ask that you please consider um, routing one of the buses that go on 233rd, whether it's the 16 or another bus all the way to Riverdale. I see that there's a huge congregation of buses that stop in Norwood and it's unclear to me why buses stop in Norwood and don't continue on to Riverdale. This would allow people not only in my neighborhood in Woodlawn but also in neighborhoods in Wakefield and Co-op City to connect to Riverdale where there's a Target, where there's a lot of other big box stores that people rely on and also critically for many people access to the number one train. That concludes my comments. Thank you very much. Thank you. The next speaker will be Gladys Jackson, followed by Rom Halder. Hello. Hello, you can begin. Yes, hello, my name is Gladys Jackson. I live in Section 5 in Co-op City. And I'd like to thank, first I'd like to thank um, Miss Mary Pearson. She's the one that did the editorial piece in the Co-op City Times this weekend. And I was, then I became a please, please reconsider making any changes to what we need our boats for everybody to the community. And we're very isolated. And we get us around the past and also highs on the other side. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
set fire to as I did. We we have strongly Thank you. Our next speaker will be Rom Halder, followed by Jasmine Cordero. Hello, good evening. My name is Ram Halder. I live in Parkchester, Bronze. I am a member Bronze Community Board 9. From this community area, many people go to Bronze Science, Lemon College, and Montefiore Hospital every day for work and school, but there have no direct bus or train. In consideration of student, senior citizen, and general workers, I am proposing a bus that goes to from this area to that route directly. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next speaker will be Jasmine Cordero, followed by David Kupferberg. Hello, my name is Jasmine Cordero. I live in the Soundview section of the Bronx, and I want to just express my gratitude for you guys expanding the BX6 select bus service to go to Soundview um, because it has been so much of a headache waiting on one bus service, like the five bus, um, to get to Soundview, especially with the Metro North coming in. Um, so I also want to express my concerns about you guys wanting to get rid of the bus stop on the five line um, between Rose, I'm sorry, between Taylor Avenue and the one on Underhill. Um, I just want to express that currently we do have a senior citizens um, community center between Rosedale and Taylor. And when you get rid of that bus stop on Taylor, you get rid of the seniors coming on the bus and getting any, any type of resources. Also, the bus stop on Soundview and Story, which is what you also want to get rid of. Unfortunately, you get rid of the local Walgreens that's very much accessible to people in Soundview, and you get rid of the um, accessible transport to um, transferring to the 27 bus going onto the ferry. And so you get rid of so many accessible ways that people can get around. Uh, because in the Soundview section, we pretty much only have the five bus. And if you get rid of certain stations that is accessible to 27 bus or to any type of local resources, unfortunately, you um, get rid of access for, for everyone. Also, um, compared to recent local census data, 87, 68% of us use public transportation. So it's very important that you do not get rid of these stops at the five bus line. Thank you. Thank you. The next speaker is David Kupferberg, followed by Raymond Lynn. Okay, we think Mr. Kupferberg might be having technical difficulties. Moving on to Raymond Lynn, followed by Jason Anthony. Uh, 
Um, sorry, wait a second. Hi, I'm Raymond. Um, I just wanted to thank you guys for letting the public speak today. Um, I strongly believe that the Bronx bus redesign proposal is overwhelmingly a good thing and creates a better network that is more suited to the needs of um, the people who live in the Bronx. However, I do have a few concerns um, surrounding the backtrack of certain routes, um, adjustments to routes, um, the reversal of the BX28 and BX34 buses um, returns complicated routing with service provided along narrow roads are prone to blockages and delays. Um, for the reliability of these bus services, I either urge MTA to um, bring back the draft plan or for New York City DOT to provide bus improvement to these areas such as bus lanes and a bu or busways. Um, the other ma area major of concern is the BX40 and BX42 in Throgsnack. Um, this area is um, the draft plan provided a specialized service toward Throgsnack through the BX42. However, there was an issue that um, with the barricade at Balcom Avenue. However, I believe that if New York City DOT implements the protected bike lane along Balcom Avenue, this barricade would have to be removed and bus service could go down Balcom as proposed in the draft plan. Um, and finally, the other major issue is with the Q50. The Q50 is in both the Queens and, Bro um, Queens and Bronx bus redesigns and they both come out with different results. I would urge MTA here in this situation to realign and to bring both of these proposals together into one unified proposal. Um, besides that, I would urge New York State DOT and MTA to bring back as much bus improvements, which is the best way to improve bus service. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker will be Jason Anthony, followed by Christopher Greif. One second. Uh, good evening, Jason Anthony from Amazon Labor Union. Uh, first of all, I wanna express my deep concern as a longtime Bronx River Houses resident due to the redesign of the BX36 that will be passing along 174th Street that will connect Bronx River residents with the rest of the borough and will have to walk to either Westchester Avenue to get the BX4, 4A, BX27 buses along Westchester Avenue or walk to 174th Street and Boston Road to get to the, to the two and five trains. Another thing, um, against the redesign of the BX6 SBS. And this is to, to the Hunts Point market. We have a lot of workers that use that bus uh, as of right now, leave it as is. The BX15, leave it as is. The BX29, that's a win-win for the residents of City Island. Uh, the B, the Q50 Limited, uh, that's a win-win. Um, but please leave the BX36 as is. And last but not least, the BX40 and 42, leave it as is going along uh, East Tremont Avenue all the way. So that's all I have to say. Thank you very much. Thank you. Our next speaker will be Christopher Greif, followed by Gwelly Grulion. I'm here. Good evening, everyone. I'm Christopher D. Greif. As, a, as a, my colleague, Edith Prentice, will always will say is gotta keep advocating for buses. One thing, I am, one thing I will remind that we do need to make sure that the BX7 is running a little more frequently 
as a lot of people have mentioned seniors, but we're forgetting people with disabilities also uses those buses to go up to the Bronx into 168th Street, where the where there's a hospital. That bus gets very crowded, and I do want to remind you the M100. Nice to see the M100 terminating down at 125th Street, but it will be better if it terminates near the A, B, C, and D trains. If you think about it, that is another ADA accessible train station. We do need to connect that to another accessibility train station. And bringing up our concerns with the Soundview end, also, as my colleague Edith Prentice did mention in the past, and I know a lot of the other Bronx people have been bringing this up, please check your lines on the Story Avenue where the BX5 is running. You have a lot of walkers, wheelchairs, people with canes that uses that bus very quickly. You have to let four buses go ahead to try to get on. And I'm not going to, I have to remind you that some of these buses are a reason why they're maybe a little close because they're near a senior or they have programs for people with disability as well. So please make sure that when we are connecting buses, make sure they're near a train station. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker will be Gwelly Grulian, followed by David Paul Geber. Um, hello, um, my name is Kelly Grillon from from Washington Heights. I would just like to say a couple of things. So first of all, um, there's a bus stop right um, near me for the M100, BX7 and M5. But since the M5 terminates close by, it's mostly for the M100 and BX7. The BX7 and M100 are extremely crowded during the rush hours, especially around 7 to 7.30 since there is a school um, um, nearby around a mile away. So if we can get a couple of rush hour school services on probably from 168 to either 220th or all the way down to Riverdale, that would be great. Also, I'm also for the BX6 extending to Soundview, but I'm actually against the M100 um, terminating at at 12th Avenue, I saw on the latest proposal. Proposal, I think it should be extended to keep going to Second Avenue, or at least terminate at the 125th Street station. And the BX15, I think it should stay how it is because I don't think the problem is the traffic. I think the problem is not enforcing the bus lanes because there are bus lanes there, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I recently went through 125th Street and saw that there was a lot of traffic, but there was also a lot of cars inside of the bus lane. So I feel like if the bus lanes got reinforced more, I think that the M100, the X15, and all the other bus routes could stay on 125th. And also just the extra services on the BX7 and M100 um, for people that go to the school nearby. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker will be David Paul Gerber, followed by George Bulo. Hi, good afternoon. Good evening. Can you hear me? Yes, you may begin. Okay, hi. This is David Paul Gerber from uh, Central Park right now. Paul, talking about the Bucks bus redesign. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, MTA. Um, I have addressed many times before, if you want to have better buses, if you want to have better bus service and you want to have faster buses, then you need to get those NYPD vehicles off the, from the 52nd precinct outside Webster Avenue off the bus lanes immediately. The bus lane is for the BX41 select bus service and BX41 local bus service, not for NYPD cars. The issue that the BX6 Limited will go to Story along Story Avenue, you have the NYPD 43rd precinct. If you have put a bus lane on Story Avenue, you could have NYPD cars illegally blocking the bus lane on Story Avenue from the 43rd precinct itself. And as far as the bus redesign, you guys need to be creative. I suggested before and I'll suggest again. There should be a route from Jamaica 
much like the Q44, but instead of Q44 making every single stop along Main Street to Flushing and then go over to the Whitestone Bridge, there should be another route from Jamaica instead going over the Clearview Expressway, over the Fox Neck Bridge, and then maybe connect somewhere along the Q44 itself. So consider, in not in this plan, but in the Queen's plan, which I already devised, more, more creative ways for people to get from Jamaica or from reach its destination without having to use the subway to the Bronx faster and better without using the long Q44 bus route. Thank you and have a great day. Thank you. Our next speaker we will be George Bulo, followed by Lisa Daglian. My name is George Bulo. Uh, I am trying just to, uh, let's see, how do I get my, is my picture showing up or not? It doesn't really matter. Um, I'm a resident of both the Upper West Side of Manhattan in the West 70s uh, and Riverdale. Uh, and I travel with great frequency and have been throughout the COVID virus and the rest, of, <clears throat> rest um, at all hours and all days on both the BXM1 and the BXM2. I'll try and keep my remarks brief. I thought they would be three minutes. With regard to the BXM1, uh, the idea of having 96th Street and Fifth Avenue be a stop is an excellent one to deal with the problem uh, of people going to Mount Sinai Hospital. It does not, however, deal with the question of going to a place like the Metropolitan Museum, obviously, or down Fifth Avenue in that direction. The second item with regard to the BXM1 is that there's the talk of eliminating at 64th Street uh, the uh, stop that's there in both directions on uh, Lexington and on Third Avenues. I would just point out that that's an excellent place. I have to go to Queens from time to time, and it's an excellent place to catch the F train. And I don't have that option if uh, that stop is eliminated. <clears throat> the, with regard to the BXM2, in agreement with the statements made by other people, uh, the, cur the curtailment of some of the times uh, particularly going southbound in the late afternoon, early evening, or even later into the evening, are, are ones that cause me a problem. I can see them being a big deal. The West Side Highway is not a good solution. Right now, the buses can take both the Harlem River Drive and the Deegan if needed. The other problem is, of course, getting to 81st Street and uh, Central Park West. That's now being eliminated. Going down Broadway might be fine. I would make two other key points. Uh, if these are, particularly if the BXM2 is changed, I would strongly suggest that the BXM3 add a stop at Broadway and 230th Street. And finally, that there is an error in the plan that has been presented, small one, but I, on page 120, the map of the BX30 is upside down. It's in the kind of in the wrong place to find it. So I just call those to your attention and would ask you to reconsider that. One final thing, which I think could be a creative approach on the part of the MTA, you have Mount Sinai East and Mount Sinai West, both obviously on the BXM2 route. They have vans that now have to go between the two hospitals. If the MTA and the hospital were to talk about it, perhaps they could eliminate their van service. Their employees could ride on the BXM2 in both directions, possibly at a slightly reduced fare, and saving the cost of operating the van. And at the same time, the rule would be changed to allow them to both uh, board and alight from the BXM on or off the BXM2 uh, in Manhattan. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker will be Lisa Daglian, followed by Frederick Wells. Hi, good evening. I'm Lisa Daglian, Executive Director of the Permanent Citizens Advisory Committee to the MTA PCAC. As someone who grew up riding buses in the Bronx, thank you for continuing the public review process and for prioritizing riders' concerns. 21 months and a pandemic later, it's clear buses are the backbone of our transit system. Throughout COVID and the overnight subway closures it brought, with the extreme weather we've seen, 
Buses have come to the rescue of hundreds of thousands of New Yorkers and continue to do so. Buses support the people who support, buses support the people who support New York. That's why it's so important that the bus redesigns move forward with public input, like you're hearing tonight, meeting riders' needs by increasing the speed, efficiency, and reliability of the Bronx transit network and beyond. The current redesign will strengthen mobility around the borough with automated bus lane enforcement, protected bus lanes, TSP, east-west east -west connection priority corridors, and increased frequencies, reducing congestion with new busways on high traffic streets like Fordham Road, East 149th and 181st Streets will also be key to speeding up routes that Bronx riders depend on. But the plan leaves room for better bus connectivity to the 13 Bronx Metro North stations that are already exist, not to mention the four new stations that will come with Penn Access. Now is the time to bridge the gaps between Bronx buses and commuter rail with the coming of Omni and as you look at fare policies, including, we hope, our freedom ticket discount commuter rail fare proposal that will also provide transfers to subways and buses. Bronx ice would also benefit from a direct bus to LaGuardia Airport. Tens of thousands of people work and travel to the airport in the, from the Bronx, just a few miles away, yet a long journey using transit. If not the Bronx redesign, then the Queens redesign. Continuing to improve connection between buses and subways and commuter rail stations is crucial to, to building an equitable transit system that reaches any, every corner of the five boroughs. Thank you, and we appreciate your listening, not just to us, but to all of the riders who are testifying tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Frederick Wells, followed by Eva Chan. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. This is Frederick Wells. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Okay, I have to say that I'm against the I'm against the splitting of the BX15 route simply because simply because that's a that's a vital route. Many people they connect with Manhattan's north south routes, say M1, M7, or M15, and and the BX15 is highly crowded along 125th going into the Bronx. Then M125 as proposed. As proposed by you guys, will will not benefit as, as sorry carry air, and and it will cause the the rest of the BX15 to lose ridership as well because people will be forced to take crosstown buses to. I suggest that that we not going to what what I show on this map here, as what we suggest that it goes to Randall's Island instead. Also, in regards to Boston Queens, okay. Going across the RFK Bridge, nobody wants to travel, take a subway into Manhattan to connect with Queen's service. Nobody wants to do that, especially when you talk about airport employees. People, I mean, I suggest that the BX41 Select is to extend to LaGuardia Airport, along with perhaps maybe the BX2 and BX17 extend to Jackson Heights via Woodside across the RFK Bridge. That'll help the Queen's network as well as the Bronx network. Okay. Going in with the co-op city, I'm against, I'm against the the because people highly rely on that route to go in the Queens to connect with nice bus, other MTA routes, or the Long Island Railroad. And since that route is going into LaGuardia Airport, I suggest that you have two bypass segments on it, a Pelham Bay bypass and a Flushing bypass, because LaGuardia Airport is going to demand a lot of people, especially when especially with a lot of employees there. And and knowing and also I suggest the BX6 select to be extended a little further Please to connect with the Q44 remarks. select at the Throgneck Shopping Center. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Our next speaker will be Eva Chan. Hi, can you hear me? I am uh, a member of uh, the com uh, Manhattan Community Board 11 uh, from East Harlem. Um, 
I'm here to advocate for better connection. Um, I'm here to advocate for better connection between uh, Bronx, Manhattan, Queens via the Triborough Bridge. Um, these are all areas of uh, neighborhoods of color and better connection by public transport will help to um, improve the economic conditions of all these districts. Um, in addition, the pandemic has shown that Randall's Island is a great source of green space. And um, on the East, East Harlem side, we continue to invest in it. There will be a new golf course that is going to be opening, as you already know. Um, we have the Icon Stadium, soccer field, tennis courts, native gardens, salt marsh, all of that. And so what we hope MTA would do is um, to provide better public transportation that can go from South Bronx to uh, Randall's Island and then extend to Queens. Um, all of that will actually help um, the businesses that are on uh, Randall's Island, for example, the tennis courts and whatnot to hire staff, because right now some of the staff can simply not get to uh, Watts Island and Randall's Island. Um, so it will help provide uh, employment opportunity for South Bronx as well if we improve um, public transport. And also some of the facilities will be better utilized um, uh, by the residents of South Brown. Any questions? Thank you. There are a few speakers who signed up to speak who either had technical difficulties or may not have joined the webinar. I will call through the remaining speakers now. If you are signed up to speak under a name that is different than the one you used to register to speak, please identify yourself now in the Q&A function so we can call your name. Our next speaker will be Sian Elefine. Please be sure to turn your camera and microphone on once your screen updates. Um, okay. Okay. Good evening. Okay. Good evening, panelists. My name is. My name is Sean, and I represent. I, and I, represent the. I represent the. Wakefield and Eden and Edenwald section. Knowing the 16 runs from Pelham Manor to Teal 6, the specific thoughts that need to be either either relocated or consolidated to help make the route faster overall. For instance, move the Teal 6 Street bus stop at Hill on Pittman to 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 Murdoch. And the hope that it would be aligned with, with the Murdoch Avenue stop towards Pell Manor. Two stops along East 238th Street, and that is, that is, that is, then, then, and that is, Nairid need to be consolidated into a single stop, specifically at Seton and, and Montes Monticello. The new consolidated bus stop needs to be on 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 Seaton Avenue. Instead of blending the 16th stop at stop at Monticello, in addition to to Seaton Avenue, in addition, Harper and Dar Avenue should also be consolidated as well. Thereby having a single bus stop at two three third on on dire only only thank you thank, thank you. you thank you our next speaker will be David Kupferberg.
David Kupferberg. There will be a brief transition after your call to speak. Please make sure that once your screen updates, your camera and microphone are enabled. Okay. Okay. Um, thank you. Thank you. Sorry. Hi, my name is David Kupferberg, and I cannot yet support the final plan until many conditions are met. Details are in my testimony. I define transfer power as the ability to transfer to from other services in order to go to from a destination for one fare. It seems that a significant number of Bronxites are unwilling to sacrifice transfer power for better and a more reliable service. Unfortunately, their concerns have not been adequately addressed. For example, it is currently a one fare ride between Fordham Plaza and LaGuardia Airport via the BX-15 and M-60. The BX-80 SBS was proposed by the MTA to directly link the Bronx and LaGuardia Airport via the RFK bridge. In order to maintain transfer power, the MTA must either create the BX-80 SBS or extend the BX-41 SBS to LaGuardia Airport. The elimination of lightly used stops could decrease travel time, but this has to be determined on a case-by-case -case basis. The volume of the bus stop is a factor, but not the only factor. Sometimes the distance to the next bus stop may be too far. Another is topography. Parts of the Bronx are known to be hilly. Besides, if multiple bus stops are eliminated in a particular corridor, a bus may stop at stop A instead of stop B, saving no travel time. In order for bus stop spacing to be effective, you have to be concerned with passenger travel time, not vehicle travel time. Read my critique of bus stop spacing after my testimony. If you wish to have a copy of my testimony, email me at D as in David, K as in Karma, U as in under, P as in party, F as in Frank at yahoo.com. That's DKUPF at yahoo.com. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. President, that concludes the public comments. Thank you very much. So I want to thank everyone for their very thoughtful remarks today, comments on both the uh, Bronx local network and Express Bus network. What we want to uh, just reiterate here is that the changes we are proposing here today are only on the Bronx local bus network. The Bronx Express Bus Network will remain the same, and we will be taking up our redesign efforts after the local bus network redesigns uh, happen across the, uh, the five boroughs. So just to reiterate, we are not proposing any changes to the current Bronx Express Bus Network. Again, I want to thank everyone to, for their very thoughtful comments today and we will take them back for uh, full consideration. Have a good evening. Thank you, Mr. President. The time is currently 7.27 p.m. This concludes the webinar. Thank you all for your participation this evening.